The election of an abbot is a key moment in the life of any religious community. And at St. John's, it's a key moment for us. This year, Abbot John Clausen turns 75 years old. Just like bishops in the Catholic Church, he has to submit his resignation as abbot of St. John's Abbey. Upon preparing for his resignation, Abbot John had the foresight to tell the community, I have served for 23 years, and it is time to elect a new abbot of St. John's Abbey. So we have an incredible opportunity on January 8th through 11th of 2024 to come together as all of the monks of St. John's Abbey to elect and to call forth our next abbot. When we begin this process of electing an abbot, we of course go through the logistical aspects that are perhaps common to all elections, but ultimately what we have to do, the responsibility that falls on each and every one of our shoulders is to listen deeply and profoundly to the Spirit because ultimately it is the Holy Spirit who will guide us in this election. Well, an abbot is the father of the community, and that's a father in terms of his spiritual leadership, his material leadership. I think one of the challenges of an abbot is that there's two sides to his work. On the one hand, he is the father of the community, and so it's a very internal focused kind of work. But at the same time, St. Benedict in his role suggests that the abbot has a responsibility to the guests serve guests along the lines of everyone is received as Christ. And so there's, there's an outward focus as well. If you want to put it in contemporary terms, most every abbot in the Western world is both a father of the community and the corporate CEO. So there's civic responsibilities and uh, ecclesial church responsibilities. Uh, the rule of Benedict says that he's the representative of Christ in our community. So he must be a shepherd, a good shepherd, like Christ is a good shepherd for all Christians. So he must be a person of compassion, of sincerity, at the same time, and mercy, of course, merciful with everybody, close to everybody, and at the same time, a person of wisdom, bringing wisdom and discipline to us with his deeds and with his words. The abbot, whoever he will be needs to be someone who's attuned to the spiritual needs of the community. He could be an expert in any other field, but if he doesn't have that on his sounding board, I think we'd be missing something. My hope for a new abbot is that he would inspire me and other monks of the younger generation to see how we could be leaders someday, recognizing that he too will have to pass the torch on, and that someday it's going to be up to the younger monks, who will then be older monks, to take on from there. Something that's happened in the last 20 years is that there's a much more described process that I have to do with a new abbot to make sure that, that the baton gets handed off cleanly to him, that he knows where certain things are, and that relationships, key relationships, are locked in, um, and, and that I actually assist in, in doing that and of. So th that's, that's a very formal kind of way. I also, you know, I need to step back graciously in such a way that, that it's clear to him and to the community that I am not the abbot anymore. So as part of the, the election process, I will loosen this up and I will take the cross off and hand it to him. That's a symbolic way of letting go. It's very, very important. Well, the election process for an abbot has kind of varied over the centuries and it's, that's made possible by the fact that St. Benedict was not very clear on how to elect an abbot. He basically had two ways of doing it. One, the monks gathered and they agreed in unison on a particular candidate. Well, that doesn't happen too often. I, you can't get monks, 100% of a community, to vote for the same thing. It just does not happen because they're human beings. So in the event that you didn't get unanimity in Benedict's rule, 
Then what's called the sani or pars made the decision. It's a Latin term and variously meaning either the healthier portion of the community, the seniors would decide, absent a kind of consensus from the rest of the community. And so today the community it welcomes anyone in solemn vows to vote for the abbot. And at least at St. John's, there'll be potentially six votes uh, at this stage. Uh, the first, in the first three votes, the abbot needs a supermajority of the capitulars to, to select him. And on the fourth ballot, if by chance they've not elected anyone by that point, they go with a regular majority, 50% plus one. You have to be in, the, in vows for 10 years as a minimum in order to be considered for election. So that usually means at the very earliest it would be in your low 30s. And in our community and the grouping of monasteries that we're involved with called a congregation, a person who is elected abbot serves for eight years or until age 75. We start with a nominating ballot when we gather and begin the actual process, and then we look at who's at the top of the nominating ballot, and we'll discuss each of those individuals. And after that, when we're all done with that, we will adjourn for a while, you know, several hours, so that people have, a, have some time to think about it, to maybe have some chats with their friends or wise advisors in their lives. There's a kind of measured tone or pace to the entire business. It's not rushed takes three days. So it suggests that we're asking for outside help and that spirit, the spirit of God, is the help we seek. It's a process that's across the entire congregation and there's a, an election committee and that, that really does the preparation process. I have deliberately stepped back from that because I, I really want the community to be free to talk, discuss, roll stuff around, and once, once we actually go into the election, then in fact, the uh, presiding uh, abbot, uh, Augustine, in fact, along with uh, other chosen members of the community uh, do the election itself. I do have a role in the sense that I, have a, I, can, I can be part of the nominating ballot. And of course, I can't be present for the evaluation process. I'm absent, but then I can be part of the election itself. The election process is a fascinating process. Having been blessed to be involved on the, edu the community education side of things, we looked at the way that our sisters at St. Benedict's Monastery call forth leadership. They are experts in calling forth leadership. St. Ben's, the monastery there, does an election every six years. And they have a beautiful guide for calling forth leadership and discernment process with very clearly laid out timelines and processes. The American Cassidy's congregation has a different process to go through, and it's very much been spirit-led. Uh, the blessing that I've been able to work with an incredible committee as we've done community education, of really doing some survey work, of having small group and then large group discussion, and really having the opportunity to say, what is the spirit calling me individually to contribute to St. John's Abbey at this point? And then ultimately saying, as a community, where are we headed in the next period of time? And then what, will, what qualities will we need in our next abbot and his team to help support him? And we know that not, in, there is no one person that will have all the qualities that, are, that we need, but we know that the Holy Spirit will help provide us with the person that will have the qualities that we need at this point. When the new abbot is elected, there's a few things we have to do before we leave the room. One of which is the abbot takes an oath of fidelity to the Catholic Church, uh, promising under oath to uphold uh, our theology and our sacramental traditions and our theological, sort of the core of the gospel and what it means to be Catholic. Once that's done, then we're able to adjourn and usually there's some sort of celebration the surefire way of appreciating who was elected is when the monks process out of the chapter house and the last guy out is the abbot, the new abbot. So it's very clear who it is because we process in seniority with the youngest in profession first, then the elders, and then finally the abbot, who in some cases could be possibly the youngest person or the oldest.
A big part of my personal discernment is first of all, being present at the community events. I hear so much about where we're at as a community, simply by being at those meetings, having a listening heart, understanding where my brother monks are and where we want ourselves to be. And so as I look forward to the election of the abbot, part of what I'm seeing is sifting through all of these different talents that we have in the community to see what will serve this community at this point in time the best way that we can as we position ourselves to look forward. Well, my discernment of how can I should be choosing and voting for a new abbot, well, especially is a spiritual discernment, is in prayer, personal prayer, and also the prayer with my brothers in the liturgy, I constantly am remembering and bringing this into the presence of God, that he could send a spirit of wisdom to our hearts so we can elect a person who has the, the characteristics to be a new leader, spiritual leader for us, and to be also a spiritual leader for our community, the college, our students, our parishes, parishioners, and uh, all the people who, are, who interact with us, staff members and, and employees. I learned that even in small decisions, and sometimes when I sense that I need to make a decision where I, in fact I'm gonna run against the community, it's really important in that moment within this Benedictine kind of context. And I think this would be true in families too. That is, you gotta have the conversation. I gotta come to the community and talk to the community about it and explain why such a, such, such, such a, uh, a decision and direction seems to be important. Here are the reasons why not, and then respond to those and reflect on it. But ultimately, then make the decision. When monks meet to elect their abbot, I think the, the key thing is charity and love that binds us all together. Uh, nothing is more important than that. And so we don't do a lot, we're not supposed to do a lot of politicking or promising that they'll do this or that somebody will do that. We wanna make sure that uh, when we discuss potential candidates in terms of what gifts do they have or where would they not have the ability to measure up to certain kinds of challenge. And ultimately, you're never gonna get anyone who's perfect. So you have to decide which challenges are the most important to face and who's going to be the most adept at handling those challenges. So it requires wisdom, so we pray for wisdom, and that's why we begin the whole process with a mass invoking the Holy Spirit upon this process. Any person coming into a new job has a lot of challenges. I wouldn't be able to address them all, but certainly the major ones would be to be able to gain the confidence of the community to allow him and his team to lead the community into uh, the future of this community's life. We have a great variety in the community in terms of gifts. We have a great variety who have their own opinions, their own needs. And so to have someone who can take this greatly varied group of people and lead them in a unified manner will be the greatest challenge the abbot will have. At this point in time, I think we're going to be looking at what does it mean for us to live as a community with fewer members? But a smaller community doesn't mean a bad community. There's so much potential here to grow together, to see closer relationships than we've experienced or had the opportunity to experience. I think the new abbot will be an astute man if he can encourage that in the community. The way he will have to interact with the world while still keeping a foot in the community and an ear to the ground for what our 
the needs of the individuals here. We look back on our long history and we see that almost every step of the way, the Abbey, the community, and the Abbot himself were all met with challenges. And as that moved through, as they moved through history, they were able to adapt to the needs, to see the needs, but not just adapt, but to see it with vision. And so I would hope that as we move into the 21st century, we will uh, prepare ourselves to see ourselves as monks living in a new era, in a new segment of history that has never been lived out before, monastically speaking. And of course, that's challenging. But again, challenge is good because it forces you to look in a very positive way into what may be the realization of new dreams. Of course, we look around us, we see we have the university, we have parishes, we have a publishing a house, we have a monastic microfilm library and a very active crew there that, of course, is dedicated to the past. You know, looking through those old manuscripts, one might say, why do you do that? We do that because we learn a great deal from the past and who we were as we move into a new century. And they were, at that time, moving into an equally new and daunting century. And so we have the same task. And my hope would be is that, is that we can meet it with an, an optimism and a new energy that can carry us into a new witness as we move into that new century. What I'm looking forward the most to having our next chapter for our monastic life is uh, to help especially those who are poor and needy, those who are different, those who are excluded by society, like immigrants, people with other ideas, people with other with situations in their lives, physical or mental. Uh, um, people who have other styles of life, different styles of life. So, yes, how are we reaching out for them? How can we improve our outreach for them? The role of the abbot in the 21st century is akin to the role of the monastery in the 21st century. It's countercultural. It makes no sense on paper. You say, why on earth are these men doing this? Why on earth are these women doing this, living this life? Ultimately, it's to follow Christ. It's to live life in community. Uh, the role of the abbot today is the same that it was in Benedict's time, but at the same point with far different sets of complications than Benedict could ever imagine. And I think the role of the abbot will certainly be to help us navigate uh, those waters and to help lead us both as a spiritual leader, but also as an administrator and to say this is the best path forward and to help listen and to help us discern the best path forward. What can make us better monks? How can we become a better community? How can we keep our life focused on Christ, on God present with us in the community members and the guests that really forms the anchor of our life? I think if we can find someone and confidently say with his leadership, we as a community can step up there. I think we will have done well in this election. I, I would like to say just a huge thank you to the community of St. John's Abbey, uh, to all of the friends and supporters uh, of our university, the prep school, the liturgical press, all those who, have, who are part of the St. John's web of community. Uh, for just an amazing support and affirmation uh, just, just across that span of years. And just to, to feel that uh, is, is it's essential, I think, for any leader, and especially a leader in the church right now and in a monastery, to, to know that and to, to bring that energy into the future because it, it creates a vision and it also creates hope.